Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch and today we are talking about the Neo Axis engine again. Now if this sounds familiar, I talked about this about two months ago when the previous version was released and uh, in that video I went into a bit more depth in depth about what the engine was all about and I'll link that in the linked article down below but today we're going to focus on what is new in the 2019.4 release. So what you see here in front of you is Neo Axis 2019.4 and there is an impressive amount that was added in this release. Now if you're unaware of this engine at all, it is available completely free, runs on Windows PCs. It's actually quite amazingly capable. It's actually shocking uh, the capabilities of this engine that you've probably never heard of, unless, of course, you are a regular to this channel. Um, it is free to use, runs on Windows machines, at least the hardware stuff. They're working on supporting more platforms and renderers on the back end. We will get to those details in just a moment. Um, but, yeah, we're going to focus right now on what is actually new in this particular release. And those kind of boil down to a couple of different topics. The first one is 2D. So here you can see a very, very simple game uh, implemented using uh, 2D stuff. And that, that's kind of where we're, the new stuff comes in here. There is now a full-blown 2D game engine in here with uh, collisions and so on. So if we go ahead and run this, I don't remember if this guy has sound or not. So if it does, I apologize. Uh, it'll take a second to build and run. And here we go. No sound. Okay, good. So you can see very simple 2D game, but we do have uh, collisions. As you see here, we got uh, dynamic or movable objects. Then we have some static objects at the top for the world to bounce off of. Uh, we've got our controllable character. Uh, so this is the start of a 2D uh, game engine built inside of Neo Axis. So the 2D game engine features are brand new to 2019.4. I want to mention something there quickly before we move on. You may have noticed that the name of the release was 2019.4, and yes, it was actually released uh, just before Christmas. And if I can give you a suggestion, if you have a game engine and you want people to cover your release, don't release it right before Christmas because nobody's paying attention. Uh, just an FYI. I figured, um, eh, you know what, it's not that long ago, so I'm covering this one slightly belatedly. But yeah, if you do create uh, your own... Um, your own tech stuff, uh, do be sure you probably don't want to make any major releases around that time of year. Okay, why did you not end? All right, exit. All right, why is there exit and why is there close? doesn't really matter. Anyways, so that is the new functionality there from the 2D side of things. Nothing too, too exciting yet, but the basics of it are in there. The next thing we got here is on the character side of things. We now have characters and character controllers. This isn't the most exciting scene you've ever seen in your life, but if you watch uh, when we run this, uh, this guy over here at the top is a con character controller, and uh, I believe this guy right here is a character controller under our control. So what they've done is created a number of components. So this guy over there is being controlled. We got over here uh, another guy that's not really doing anything, and this guy is going to run until he hits this uh, physics limitation, like so, and then he's going to stop. And then what we can do is come up over here and if we so wish, kind of be a bit of a jerk, we'll knock that out of the way. So you see we've got two character controllers, one that actually uh, we're controlling. So um, you see it's it's for uh, us and then we can sit here and we can actually move this guy around. Now the funny thing is when you actually start pushing him, he goes back into his walk animations <laughs> like so. So yeah, we can be a bit of a jerk and push people off into infinity. But that was another thing they added here. So the things that control the cameras, uh, that control the uh, characters themselves, those are all components in the scene. So if you select one of these guys in the scene, you'll see a character now is composed of uh, character, uh, uh, the component underscore character class, and then character input processing is available. This is the guy that we were controlling earlier on. And you'll see if you select character on it, you can actually select it to be uh, controlled by the player. You've got a number of different properties you can set for controlling characters here. So you see their height, uh, their mass, and so on as they're moving around. Uh, it, can they run? Can they jump? Can they fly? And then for every one of these things, we've got various different events that control it behind the scenes. You see here you can link out and handle those events. Uh, in Neo Access Engine, you program in using either their visual scripting language or using the C-sharp programming language. And then again, one of these guys, and I haven't found it yet, but basically you say, yes, the character is controlling this guy. It might be down here. Uh, nope. All right, it's somewhere around here. I might be on the wrong character too. Uh, but basically, yeah, that is uh, one of the new things here. They've got the character stuff going on. And then the final new major thing here is the builder support. So just by looking at a couple of these examples, you're getting an idea of just how robust the functionality here is. So here you can use it for, it's like Mesh Builder in, um, 
in Unity. So you can build and prototype levels uh, using CSG directly inside of the editor. So you got all these various different pieces to work with and play around with. Or what we can do is come on over. We'll do it here in this empty space. Come on up here and you'll notice we've got uh, primitives available. We, we've got a couple of new primitives. I don't remember which ones are new to this. We'll get to that when we hit the release notes in a second. But things like, I know Arch is new, for example. So we can drop in stuff. And you can basically just start creating um, your levels really quickly on the fly. So if you want to create like old school CSG geometry by, doing, by bringing things together, let's grab a sphere. And we'll drop this into that guy. All right, so let's move these two so they're actually overlapping, like so ish. I think we're overlapping now. Yeah. All right, so we got some overlap going on. And now that we've got overlap, what I'm going to do is shift select. So we've got both these guys selected. And you switch over here into your builder guy. So you see here, you've got a number of different options. You can select by the overall shape. You can create new shapes here. Edge vertex, face selections. And then what we're going to do since we have multi-select going on is I'm going to create a union. So now what I've done is I've turned, and I don't remember if it's the source or the destination. I think it's the second one. Yeah, so there you see. Our sphere now has a ball attached. We can go back to our arch and get rid of it if you so wish. So you can see you can create uh, compound geography, uh, geometry. Geometry, sorry, geography. Uh, really simple. You've got Boolean effects available there. Uh, we can set the material and color on things. So if we wish to make it mauve or purple, uh, we can do so. Although it's not actually setting it yet. Oh, no, it's because when it's selected, you can't see it. All right, I'll try that again. Set color. This guy reddish. Okay. All right, I'm using it wrong because that should set the color. So I'm definitely doing something wrong in this case. But anyways, you see here, you've got effects. You've got the ability. You can grab things by uh, edges, faces, and so on. The weird thing is I, I can't find any transformation tools. So hopefully these are coming uh, at some point in the future because you've actually got some of the slightly more advanced things here that you probably wouldn't expect. So, for example, I can go here to uh, vertices mode. I can face select a bunch of these, and I can do things like split and merge. So if I want to do merge, I merge at the middle, and it will collapse all that geometry down to the simplified version. So you see, you've got all the tools here that you would need to do uh, quick, easy mesh stuff. We can do mesh smoothing. So if I go ahead and grab the object, we could go smooth normal. So see, now we've got smooth results. And it is a full-blown editor. Now, again, the only weird thing that I'm missing, and this is probably me and not it, because I can't imagine what this would be there for, is once you've actually selected a face or multiple faces, I, I don't know any way to move things around. I and mean, we've got the move option up here. We've got move selected. It just it doesn't do anything. It's always in selection mode. So it might be a mistake on my behalf. I am not entirely certain. Uh, but the only way I'm actually able to make movement changes is uh, at the object level, not at the individual face level. But you can see the 3D builder component of um, Neo Axis Engine did get more capable and more powerful. And with that, that is the major things going on here. But if you want to check it out, again, there are a ton of content uh, demos to start with. Here we go to the more advanced uh, nature demo. I think this one actually takes a little bit to load, but it gives you an idea of the capabilities of this engine. It is quite a shockingly robust engine. And you can see in this one release since um, you know, a couple of months ago, we've added 2D, the builder got a whole lot better, uh, character controllers and so on. So it, it is an engine that is in, um, it's improving at a remarkably good clip, as you'll see so far. And here we go. Here is an example of a, ooh, uh, a level editor or a nature level being done. For some reason, I think I'm running on the wrong GPU. But you get an idea of what kind of capabilities this guy has. Um, it, it, it's it's a shockingly capable engine. I, I can kind of keep repeating that point, but hey, it's true. It, it is a uh, very cool engine that people, more people should probably check out. And we won't save that, we'll exit out. The only thing I kind of have going against it is the user interface is a little bit on the ugly side, um, but that's kind of a minor gripe. It is definitely usable. Um, so here we go. So we're at 2019.4 uh, release was just released. Uh, you see here the additions, we've got our game framework. That's the stuff I showed you early on for character controllers. You can configure the camera types, first person camera, third person camera, free cameras, uh, stuff there for managing characters uh, and so on. So a lot of specialized game objects to make creating a game a lot imp uh, easier because basically They've done the work for you in the game framework. Uh, then we've got the brand new 2D game engine. Uh, I saw, showed you a really quick demo there, but so far we've got 2D physics, sprites, uh, tools, demo scene. Uh, 2D game engine is implemented as an extension. There is more components of that coming in the near future. Character component, I kind of covered that as part of the game framework because, hey, so did they. Uh, but a set of tools for creating characters. 
Uh, particle systems, uh, I don't really know what they changed there. That's kind of a vague limitation because it had particle systems before, I believe. Uh, so uh, that uh, train painting layers, primitives were added were arch, doorway, pipe, prism, stair, and torus. So there's the list I promised you later on. Uh, builder 3D improvements, that's what we saw at the very end there for where you could create your own geometry and uh, do the Boolean operations on them for some quick level prototyping. Uh, GPU instancing for transparent objects, new access baking, the ability to disable compression of archive that makes loading baked resources is faster. Uh, the ability to set uh, color multiplier for decals in the scene or decals, depending on how you say that. Add collision convex mode has been added. Uh, surface area has been added and a bug fix in there for management of color properties of meshes when uh, GPU instancing is enabled. And yeah, that one didn't work so great for me today, but oh well. Uh, and then we've got some of the upcoming things that are going to be happening in a future releases. We've got uh, primitives, polygon-based polyhedron, a mesh geometry in the form of polyhedron generated by thickening a polygon. Uh, small improvements are going to be coming to Builder 3D. That again is that CSG stuff we showed at the end there. Uh, the editor is going to have the ability to disable animation of Windows auto hiding, a little bit of broken English going on with that one. I'm not really sure what they mean. Um, and then we've got the ability to configure which resources must be included in the final build, filtering the asset folder, option to include shader cache, option to include the cache of auto compressed images. And that is coming in the future. Now, if you want to look a little bit further at what's going on, Neo Access Asset has a roadmap on. I will link this in the linked article down below as well. So you see here right now, we've basically got the, the things that are in the works. And some of these things can't happen until other things do happen. So for example, they're working on OpenGL ES, which is going to ultimately give them render. The key is, or down here is on the side. So it's tag just can't do it's not because they can't do it ever it's because they can't do it because it is predicated on an earlier feature so the can do's are things they are going to be working on so we have DirectX 12 Vulkan Metal API and OpenGL for example in the future that is going to give us access to a number of new platforms going forward and they are working eventually towards virtual reality support anything in gray is already done but it gives you an idea of the kind of stuff that you are going to be seeing in the future so they are working towards uh, virtual reality they are working to include uh, video tutorials coming Coming forward. Now, the nice thing is their manual is actually pretty good. So come up here to documentation, you will find a pretty in-depth set of documents on pretty much all aspects of working with this guy. So it is a well-documented uh, system for sure, uh, but they are working on video tutorials for the future. Uh, and that is about it. That is Neo Axis. Uh, again, uh, the last release was in November. So uh, we're looking at just shy of two months. They managed to add 2D, a character controller, uh, new primitives, and much more. Uh, so definitely this is an engine to keep your eye on. The, these releases... Um, uh, they, they're adding things at a pretty impressive clip. And like I said, they, they've recently gone uh, completely free. I believe they are supported uh, entirely off Patreon right now. So if you go to buy, uh, you no longer can actually buy it anymore. So this is the way things used to be. But going forward, they do not do this anymore. Uh, so you don't buy licenses anymore. It is entirely uh, community, community supported, I believe. Um, let me just verify that. If we go back to here... Uh, Wow, they got to make that more prevalent. And I also think they're trying to make some uh, moves in their store. And I also believe they are actually looking for investors. So if you're interested in getting in with a project like this right now, uh, reach out to them. I'm sure they will be interested in hearing from you. But right now for you, oh yeah, so it's donation-based. The donations work on Patreon. By the way, another uh, suggestion I would make is uh, make that much more prevalent on your site. That was way too much digging to get there, by the way. So uh, it is a donation-based software for now. Um, so definitely worth checking out. So that is NeoAxis available at neoaxis.com. 2019.4 was, I would say just released, but like I said, it was released on like Christmas Eve or something like that. So it didn't get a lot of notice back then. And again, my recommendation to anybody that works in the world of tech, don't release anything right before Christmas. But like I said, some pretty impressive stuff in there. 2D, 3D builder stuff, character controllers, game uh, objects in their new game framework. Uh, all in about two months time. So it'd be interesting to see where this engine goes. Let me know what you think of it if you checked it out in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.